Welcome to The Fitness Journey, where entrepreneurs solely devoted to health, wellness, and fitness share their journey to establishing a successful business in the fitness industry. We encourage our listeners to continue to dream right, expand, and make intentions nurture goals. All right, so Steve, thank you for joining me. Um, this Today we have the president of Satin Wellness, Steve Satin. Um, thanks for sitting down with me, and we just were going to make this very um, uh, open conversation, um, and Steve can tell us about his, uh, his business and how he really excelled in it uh, right now. Um, Steve, actually, you can tell them about uh, what you did and what you are, what you are about, what you stand by, what your core values are, and then we'll like warm up and we'll go right in it. Okay. So, Steve, what do you do? How do you do it? And how <laughs> how are you such a successful man? Please well, tell us. thank you for that, Ruben. Uh, Satin Wellness is an in-home personal training company. Our fourteen wellness specialists deliver health and wellness to premier clients up and down the East Coast. So for the last 23 years, our business model is going into people's homes, developing exercise programs for them. It's mostly people 50 plus. We do work with a couple of college football players. We have worked with professional athletes, quite a few in the past, but most of them now are just people 50 plus who are trying to find the time to get themselves healthy and fit and having a difficult time doing it. We use a proprietary methodology called LROME, L-R-O-M-E, which stands for Limited Range of Motion Exercise. And what that does is it allows people to focus on specific muscle groups rather than their overall body. So for athletes, absolutely, it's critically important to do functional training as well as sports-specific training. But as people age, it's not so much about them trying to become athletes. Mm -hmm. It's about them more being fit. And where there are 320 million people in the United States and about 52 million are health club members and about 10% actually use their membership, our goal is to help people get healthy, not about becoming athletes. That's where Elrom comes in. So Elrom can be used by athletes as part of their program because it focuses on specific muscle groups that may be challenged. But Elrom can be used by anyone across the board. That's very interesting. So, again, for the last 23 years we've done this, uh, Satin Wellness has grown quite a bit. We're actually starting to open up more down in Florida as well. Um, We have people now in New Hampshire. We have five or six people in Mass. We have people in New York, New Jersey, North Carolina, and one on the west coast of Florida, and we're going to be opening up the east coast of Florida within the next couple of months. Now, I noticed um, the way you do your practice, is it that um, the service you go to your customers? Only. Only? Only. That's very interesting. How did you come about that, and how did you sit down and decide, hey, you know what, I'm going to go to the people instead of have the people come to me? Great question, Ruben. What happened was I had my own business selling exercise equipment across the U.S., Mm -hmm. And my business went belly up in the late 1980s. So one of the questions in there was, you know, what was that aha moment? Well, my aha moment was I had never made money. I, you know, obviously played ball in college, never had anything, Mm -hmm. didn't have a lot of money growing up, definitely lower middle class. And in my first year in business as a manufacturer's rep selling exercise equipment throughout the U.S., made a little over a million dollars. So, of course, never having a dime, I took every bit of it and spent it. Cars, big houses, the whole bit. First kids. And then um, in the late 80s, you probably don't remember, but in the late 80s, you probably, when were you born? 91. I'm Shut 91 up. 91. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> young. That is the year my company started. There you go. So 1989 was like Black Monday when the stock market crashed. Uh-huh. Well, at the same, same time the stock market crashed, a couple of companies that I was repping mm-hmm. went belly up. Some pretty big name companies back then. So I lost my business, had to pay for all the equipment that was out there, didn't have any money. So I was in the hole about a half million dollars. And what were the the equipments that you started out selling? Exercise equipment. Exercise equipment. Yeah. And these were things that you ordered overseas or how did you? No, no. They were all all, uh, national companies. They were all from the U.S., most of them. Okay. There were a couple that weren't, but they went belly up. They had manufactured treadmills that weren't that great, and they were guaranteeing the treadmills. Mm -hmm. 
Com one company was DP, one company who is still around, I think, uh, Tunturi, uh, York Barbell, mm -hmm. which obviously is still around and doing very well, right. as well as a couple other other companies. Uh, Voight was another one. So a lot of these companies went into reorganization, and they were all just getting into exercise equipment, and some of their products weren't the best. Yeah. So I got stuck with a lot of these products that were in companies, you know, things like uh, Sears, back yep. then was really yep. big. Leechmere, which you probably never even no. heard of. They were a huge company. There were 13 of them in New England and in New York. And they were a big client of ours. So there was about a half million dollars of product that was still out in the market that I had to pay for. So I went from having a million dollars to being down a half million dollars. That was the aha moment. <laughs> so I had had, uh, we had two children at that point yeah. and no money. So moved back to Massachusetts Stayed with family for about six months, started a recoup, started a business as an in-home personal training company. Okay. There was nobody doing personal training in the Boston area. There was, it was only out in California. Yeah, of course. Yeah. This, was, yeah. this was 1990, late 1989, late, early 1990 was when I started, quote unquote, even though I didn't have a company. Yeah. Just starting going into people's homes mm -hmm. and marketing every way I could. Oh. So the company started to grow a little bit. We started to make a little bit of money. So obviously from there, business has grown quite a bit. But the aha moment was there were a lot of health clubs out there already. They were just really starting to grow. But there was nobody doing personal training locally and no one doing in-home. So I wanted a niche. Yes. I'm all about a niche. Of course. You have all to about a niche and all about branding. So now speaking of your niche, so you said you were giving uh, personal training services strictly, right? And then how did you... How did the, the L Rome come into play as you started doing huh? your services? You you hitting all of them. All right. Okay, so L Rome or limited range of motion mm -hmm. exercise started when I was playing college football, I got hurt. And back in 1979, they could pull your scholarship. Oh yeah. So Where did you play again? Northeastern. Uh, Northeastern. Yeah, okay. so yeah, they don't That's even good. have football anymore. Yeah. We had two guys who played in the NFL, so we so, were pretty good. Yeah. We were pretty good. Uh, but so I got hurt, had quite a few surgeries on my shoulder mm -hmm. and knee and wrist and couldn't play anymore. So I wanted to try to play again. So I started strength training, but I couldn't strength train in the way that the athletic trainers said, which was full range. Yeah. I had blown out my entire left shoulder, no yes. bone because of too much lidocaine and Novocaine mm -hmm. shots before every yeah. practice and every game, yeah. which thank goodness they don't do anymore. So. The glenohumeral fossa was pretty much gone. My rotator cuff was gone. Mm -hmm. Everything was gone. They had to try to reattach it. But um, so I lost my scholarship and tried to get back strength training. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do full range of motion. It just hurt too much. My shoulder wasn't strong enough to be able to do it. So I started using shorter ranges of motion. And the trainer said, you can't do shorter ranges because the muscle will not be strong if you do short range, which actually... Since 1989, I've found 15 studies done on partial or limited range of motion, mm -hmm. and they all say that even if you do shorter ranges of strength training, yeah. you strengthen across the whole entire muscle. So now, did you take that upon yourself to start treating yourself, or did you yes. maybe... Yes, yeah, because I couldn't do it any other way. Yeah. It wasn't anything a PT spectacular. Or anything, or? Nope, just did it all myself. That, taking it in yeah. your own hands. Well, back, that, was back in the, that was back in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Okay. Yeah. The physical therapy wasn't like it is now. Yeah. And neither was athletic training. Mm -hmm. So I had to do something to try to get back. So I lost my scholarship. I went to Bridgewater State College. Yep. I had blown it out a second time because I tried to come back and play too quickly. So they had to do surgery twice, which was four screws, a metal cuff, and a plastic plate to hold everything in my arm in. Uh, plus reattaching all the, the uh, rotator cuff, the deltoid, um, with the pectoralis as well, mm -hmm. and bicep tendon. So it was quite, quite extensive surgery. So I finally got to the point where I felt I was strong enough to be able to play. So I tried out at Bridgewater State College, which is Division Three, yeah. and took a hand off, took a hit. My arm totally fell apart. So I said, I'm done. I was smart enough to realize that. So luckily, back then, you didn't, you know, school was a little bit different as well. Mm. So at this point, they, I actually had to learn how to study because I had never studied in high school or college. So I actually had to learn something which was a scary proposition. All of a sudden, you know, I'm, um, what was I, 19 years old, 20 years old, and had never studied anything. Applying yourself. Yeah, man. so all of a sudden, yes, 
tried to learn how to study. You know, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a pretty scary time in my life. But that was another aha moment because I learned that I was smart, that I could study and could learn. Yeah. So the, uh, again, there were a lot of hurdles when I was young. And I think that was the thing that set me up for starting a business and being an entrepreneur was nothing for me was easy when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Um, what do you, I, I have to, I have to ask this, um, down the road, what did you visualize that ended up being different? And, and this can be, you know, when El Rome uh, started and, or, you know, during El Rome, it's like, you know what, I'm going to take things in this direction, even though initially I thought it was going to be in that direction. Did you have any of those or once you kind of set it up, it, it kind of just took off? Yeah. Once I set it up, uh, you know, once yeah. I set up saying, okay, I'm going to use El Rome with my clients. Yeah. I found I couldn't believe how well it worked, wow. especially for my clients. Because at the beginning, my client, you know, I, I had a couple of clients that were that I played college football with that were going on to the pros. Yeah. So that was easy. You know, it was just literally beat them up at that point. You know, pushed them as hard as I could, mm-hmm. and it was it was easy. But there was an article that ran in the Cape Cod Times, okay. and uh, this was in like 1990. And I was getting these calls from people that were 60 years old, 70 years old, that had physical issues. And I was used to making people run up and down stairs, you know, do clean and jerks and heavy bench press. And these weren't, these weren't people that could do that. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of overweight people as well. So I had to, the, the next aha moment was these people teaching me how to work with them yeah. to make it so it was palatable that they could actually do it and be compliant. Yes. And as we all know, the hardest part for any client is being compliant. Of course. <laughs> so, the, yes, that was the, uh, the, the way they taught me how to use El Rome was more the mind-body connection rather than the just lift heavy weights. Uh-huh. So we've transformed everything into where it used to be working with really heavy weights to now it's much lighter weight, much more focus and concentration, because most of our clients are 50 plus, they're very wealthy, and what they want is someone to come in, put them through a program that they can do. Because as I say to the people who work for us, nothing succeeds like success. Help your clients succeed, they will stay with you forever. Help them love fitness because very few people love fitness, right. especially when you're 60 and have had a lot of physical issues or you're just older and heavy. Yeah, yeah. So the goal is to make them happy. And that's what El Rome does for them. Oh, that's, that's very, I like how you put that. Um, I do have to ask, um, how did you um, get El Rome to become a certification? I see you have an affiliation with ACE. That's very interesting. And you got into business. How were you able to pitch well, that to them? Or, and how does that work? And well, the first thing was I trademarked it. Okay. That was first. Trademark. Yeah. I, yes, I wanted this to be my baby. Okay. And it's funny, <laughs> we have five children. Yep. And as they say... The co- company in El Rome is the sixth baby. The sixth baby. Little do they know, it's probably more important to them mm-hmm. than it was, you know, back years ago. Yeah. But uh, so what I did was, all I, all I did was I just did a search online mm-hmm. for uh, co- uh, continuing education providers. CCs. Yep. So it was very, from there, it did take a while and it is finan- you know, for people, it, 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 there is a cost yeah, associated, yep. associated with it. So we have um, ACE, we have NSCA, we have NASM, and we have AFA certifications, mm-hmm. approval. Well, we do not have ACSM yet, even though I've been in contact with ACSM, the CEO of ACSM, about 15 times back and forth. And the reason why they did not certify mm-hmm. the, the CE course is because I am not certified. I'm not a certified personal trainer anymore. I let my certifications go because I don't have time, nor do I want to go to a, a conference oh, I mean, it's to the, take a course. That's the benefit then, right? The right. Well, also, I have my there. exercise physiology degree, nice. so I have a good background yeah. of the human body yeah. anatomically, and I think as much as anything, that from working with our cl- type of clientele, that's more important. Of course. Wow. But should I have my... Personal training certification, probably with ACSM. Yes, because if I did, then I would be able to have the CE courses approved by ACSM. But ACSM takes ACE courses anyway. They take ACE approvals. Very interesting. Now, did you plan this, um, what I call the double market niche, so that, you know, you're working with the clients, and then at the same time, now you're providing an opportunity for the trainers 
to get a certification, which is, I think, genius. Um, is that... It was an offshoot. Was that it? <laughs> yeah, it was an offshoot. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'd start, I mean, you know, we're, again, working, the one thing that, that has developed mm -hmm. from 23 years of doing this yeah. is I have a group of board of advisors. Oh. Right. They're not a board of directors because okay. a board of directors, you have to pay their insurance. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So a board of advisors are a group of clients of mine. Some of mm -hmm. them sold their businesses for $550 million. Those are the type of clients I have. Mm -hmm. So... Whenever I come up with an idea, I'll go to them and they'll say, Steve, this is not smart. Steve, this is smart. Try this, do this. So after working with these clients for so many years, they kind of rubbed off on me, mm -hmm. their entrepreneurial spirit as well. So you're getting feedback all the time on, wow, on the house. And yes. it's coming from the people who receive your, your who know, service. Who know my service that's better the, than anyone else. Wow, that's the best way to do it. Absolutely. Right? And th by the way, that is what any person who owns a business mm -hmm. should do. You want to get as much feedback from your customers exactly. as you can. Because wow. they're the ones who tell, tell you if you're doing well or not. Mm -hmm. If you're barking up the right tree or the wrong tree. Wow. So I took this information to them. They said, we love El Rome so much. There are so many personal trainers. By the way, in the year 2020, what is it? the U.S. Labor Department says there's going to be 330,000 personal trainers in the United States. Yeah. So how are you going to separate yourself? How are you going to differentiate yourself? from all those other trainers. So El Rome is a differentiator for me. Mm -hmm. So teaching that nationally, and I think next year I'm going to Israel to wow. teach El Rome. Not to personal trainers, but to the physical therapists. Wow. So as well as it looks like China and South Korea. Is that, so, is that, yeah. is those, is that the next group? That's of the next, that, yeah, that's wow. the next so that's step. The next, wow, that's, that's amazing. The next so I'm doing work with uh, TSI, which are mm -hmm. The Boston, New York, Washington, and Philly sports clubs. Mm -hmm. So TSI or Town Sport International, they're the holding company okay. because they're a public company, publicly yep. traded. Um, they're doing a lot of work with YMCA's, and mm -hmm. now we'll take it more to probably international. Wow. So that's that's the, that's the answer right there. That's yeah. the next step. You're, and then the other thing they said was, companies. okay, you might as well take this corporate program, mm -hmm. the strength to lead and strength to live programs, take them to companies and really push it hard. I know you were mentioning something um, earlier about that. Um, we were, you didn't get it on here. Uh, what exactly is, is, is strength to lead? And strength to lead is yeah. a corporate program yeah. that's used for sales professionals, business executives, and corporate leaders. Mm -hmm. And it's from working for 23 years with all these corporate leaders. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who taught me the things that really help business people, high-end business people, to become leaders and stay there. Yeah. So if you look on Google, there's like 1.6 million results on, on, on uh, programs for being a better leader, yeah. which is great. That's a wonderful thing. But the one component that's missing through all of them is health. Not just health, but being truly healthy to be able to handle all the twists and turns that these people run into every day. Yeah. You know, lack of sleep, travel, family issues, business issues, they see them all. Yeah. So the goal is to kind of develop a program for these people to make them feel comfortable in their own skin and give them the importance of exercise to teach them that importance. There's a book that came out uh, called Spark okay. by John Rattay, R-A-T-E-Y. Mm -hmm. He was at Mass General, he's a psychiatrist at Mass General. But the link now is stronger than ever between, yeah. pardon me, the link between exercise and brain chemistry, yeah. especially cardiovascular exercise. Uh, we are 20, I think we're 27th or 28th, the U.S., with developed countries in math and science. Now, <laughs> there was a group, two physical education teachers in a, Town in Illinois, it's either town or city, and I don't remember, pardon me, but they put the, their, their uh, physical education classes, they put them through a very heavy cardiovascular exercise program every day, five days a week, yeah. getting them to 70 to 80 to 85 percent of max heart rate. They found that the, it was the 75 to 85 percent max heart rate they took the same math and science yep. testing. They finished number one and number six in the world. They didn't change anything else. That was the only thing they changed. So neurogenesis, yep. the regenesis, or the, the, uh, 
the increase of blood cell, uh, brain cells, yep. goes through the roof with hard cardiovascular exercise. Oh. So that was found just in this one town in Illinois. So isn't it incredible how much of a link there is between how important exercise is and how important brain function is? Of course. And obviously, if you look at the inverse, if someone sits at a desk all day long and does very little, imagine what that does for decreasing the amount of neurogenesis. Yeah. So that's where Strength to Lead came from. Strength to Live was an offshoot of that because the companies that we work with now wanted us to come up with a program for their employees. So strength to lead is for the corporate, mm -hmm. more the, the leadership in the corporate. Right. And then the strength to live is the employees themselves. Get everybody on the same yep. page. That's, that's phenomenal. Uh, you're able to see, you know, see what the demand is. demand is. I think that's really interesting how you're doing that. And well, that's the fun part yeah. of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. What, is, what, are, what are people's problems? You know, what issues can you solve? Um, well, what, yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Absolutely, Ruben. As you well know, the goal is to help people get healthy and fit, yep. no matter how it is. And if that means you have to tap dance for an hour in front of a client, that's what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. If that means you have to assuage their fears for an hour, that's what you have to do. Yeah. If you have to push them and give them a little kick in the fanny for an hour, that's what you have. Your job is to work for your client. Yeah. It's not a cookie cutter program. Yep. It's to do what your clients need. Yeah. So when you have your first client that comes to you that's 70 years old, mm -hmm. that had a stroke, that had a heart attack, that had cancer, that has a knee replacement, hip replacement, sp uh, spinal stenosis, yep. whatever it is, arthritis of the spine, and they say, okay, I want to get healthy, and you have to develop a program, and you're only used to working with athletes, working with athletes is not going to help you with working with these people. Yeah. Having a knowledge of the human body is, the anatomy, the physiology, the kines is critically important. That's why you're gonna do so well. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. Um, I think you just spoke about it and I think I have to follow up and ask you, um, I think what is, what, what is the biggest thing that you needed patience for uh, within the business, you know, because you know you have these ideas and then you wanna put them to work. And hiring. There's a hiring. hiring. Patience with hiring. Oh. Patience with people who work for you. Interesting. Yes. Okay. We have a methodology that we have found, and it's a local company mm -hmm. that has a psychometric tool that measures motivation and drive. Wow. And, and we put, <laughs> yes, and we put every single new hire through this survey. You do it online. It takes you five minutes. It's very easy, but we will know all about how much motivation and drive you have. By the way you answer the question. By the way you answer these two questions. I think I took a similar test that way. Um, so this is all done online. It's very expensive, yeah. but it's more than well worth it. I think some companies are starting to use that to see their, what their personnel is. There are, like. there are I think this, this tool mm -hmm. has been used six million times. Jesus. So, <laughs> yes, it's used quite often. And again, it's a local company, so it's great. We access them through their website. It works out very well. So the thing is, we know where people's strengths and weaknesses are, just like with our clients. Mm -hmm. If you don't do an assessment on a client, if you don't do a full strength and flexibility assessment uh -huh. on your client and do a full health, and, uh, health assessment on yeah. them, like a personal and familial yeah. health assessment, how do you know about your client? Well, it's the same thing with somebody you hire. How do you know they're going to be good? Or how do you know they're going to fit into whatever your corporate culture is? Mm. So we have a corporate culture of X. Ours is all about clients. Yes. It's all about clients. And we have our program is called Client for Life. We want clients that can afford our service forever. Wow. That's the goal. So we want specific people to come work for us. Again, they're called wellness specialists, mm -hmm. not personal trainers. We wanted that differentiator because our people are older. The people who work for our company are 40 plus. Mm -hmm. So we don't have kids who are in their 20s. Mm -hmm. We have found our niche because the people that we work with are premier and they want people who are well-educated and are very knowledgeable. Yep. So what we do is we first put them through this psychometric tool. Then I take them through our CE course, LROM CE course, yep. the advanced one, the two-day course. 
And then from there, they know as much as they need when walking in to be with a client. They know what to expect. They know how to work with a client. They know how to act when they're with a client. Yeah. And they know how to dress for success, mm -hmm. which I know sounds crazy, but that's such a huge oh. deal working with a client. If you go into a client and you have shorts and a T-shirt on, mm -hmm. or if you have on sweatpants and sneakers, mm -hmm. they're going to expect X from that personal trainer. Yeah. Well, our wellness specialists all dress mm -hmm. for the day. So they are in business casual when they go see their clients. Because I want our, cl I want our clients to realize mm -hmm. that who they're working with are the top of the line. Certainly. So to be able to have all that information about a person who is coming to work for you, yeah. it's the same as a client. Wow. That's, that's great stuff. <laughs> I'm, you know, continue, as, as you're speaking to me, I'm always getting impressed by every little um, detail that you pay attention to. And that's the thing, I think, you know, some people, you know, they, they miss out on the small things, right? That's what you... Small things kill companies. Yeah. You miss out on the small things. And by the way, you are going to do very well because you listen very well. And that's how you learn. Thank you. You're going to do very well as an entrepreneur. Plus all the information that you're going to have in your brain. You're going to have every tool in your toolbox. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it, Steve. You're welcome. Um, wow. I mean, as we're getting towards the end here, I think this is um, the theme of, I guess, the growth. Uh, your growth as an individual, as, as your company, as you look back on it. Things that you, you know, you know, wow, maybe, wow, maybe I would have done this differently. But, you know, myself, I'm a big fan of learning curves. So, you know, it's not like, you know, if mistakes happen, you learn from them. Um, but at the same time, you, you apply those things to the future. So what are some of those things that you think, you know, um, as, you know, the president of a company, what you've seen with, with your, you know, your personnel and your, your people, like what, what things would you, you know, maybe have done a little bit differently, but obviously have helped, allowed you to see that with the mistakes that you've made. Well, this, the, the first thing I would have done is the 30 people that I hired before using the psychometric tool, I would have never hired. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with that. It's just I would have done the, used the psychometric tool first. Okay. Because the first 30 people who came in to work with us, they came in and went out, came in and went out. And it was because of me. Trial and yeah, I was just, I was too driven. I well, pushed these it, people too hard. That, they and they weren't, the that, that wasn't the type of people that they were. Yeah. So that was the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, uh, thank goodness that I lost all that money at the beginning because now I really appreciate money. Yeah. <laughs> I don't throw it around like I used to, which uh, is very important. Yes. That's the other thing. Um, taxes. Okay. When I was younger, I didn't pay taxes. Uh, now, it, it, and I tell this to every single person who works for us, every single paycheck you get, and we do things a little differently with our company to get money to our people fast, which they really appreciate. Okay. But I make them take 30% of everything they make and put it into a separate tax account. That's the first thing I tell them. Because I don't want them coming to me at the, you know, in April saying, oh, my God, I don't have any money. Uh -huh. So this way they put their money aside. That way when they pay their taxes, they always get money back. And they're very happy. And, and this is your, your employee? employee. Yeah, these are the, yeah, these are the subcontractors who work for us. Okay. Right. We make them automatically take 30% of everything they make and put it into a separate tax account. So that way they always have money at the end of the year to pay their taxes. Yes, they're not making 100% of their money, but no one does. Yeah. So this way, they're safe. That's created a safe net. So that's another thing I've learned. It's people need to pay their taxes mm -hmm. because they don't want to get hit at the end of the year. Yeah. So you know, we go to our accountant and I'm always hemming and hawing and complaining about the amount I pay. And the accountant always says these wonderful words. You must be making a lot if you're paying a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Now, is there things that you looked into? I know sometimes you can get taxes, you know, for like a company car, or a, you know. Oh, yeah, you can write everything off. Write yeah, everything for the off, small so. business, you write absolutely yeah. everything off. Okay. Yeah, good. absolutely. Yeah, if you're smart yeah. enough yeah. and you have a good enough accountant, yes, you should be able to write most all of your mileage. Yes, all of your repairs, everything for your computer. Any, yeah, absolutely. You have to be careful, and you should talk to a, a good, you know, bookkeeper Especially to get yeah. you set up. A bookkeeper and accountant. We have one of each, and they're very expensive, but they're very well worth it. Now, just in regards to what I've learned in business, mm -hmm. pay your taxes, focus on your client, forget about yourself. You have to be very selfless if you really want your business to grow. Also, um, 
keep yourself in good shape physically because obviously that's going to help your brain. But have a course, you know, in other words, plot a course, mm -hmm. have a budget, incredibly important to have a budget, know what you're spending. The other thing is that I found when I first started my business was SCORE, Service Corps of Retired Executives. Now I worked with, the, with SCORE down on the Cape because that's where I started my business. SCORE is a group of, what it says, retired executives. It doesn't cost you any money. It's a federally funded program, so it doesn't cost you a dime, but it's the most important thing you can do when you start a business. That can be your board of advisors. Oh, okay. It doesn't cost any money, and your goal is all you do is go in with an idea, and they will help flush the idea. And these are Break people, down, yeah. You know. And these are people who are retired executives. They've, They've done very well. They've seen it all and done it all. Mm. So a lot of my clients who are retired, I use them as my score. That's interesting. That's that's you know it's funny because people always talk about having like a mastermind. You know, of mm. people that, that and that's good too. But same. score is it? But that's right. And that's, it, that's, yeah. you, that, you know, surround yourself with people. Who the best are, people. Exactly. If you want to have a good company, surround yourself with the best people. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. And the last thing I'm going to say, mm -hmm. if you want to grow a business, you have to market and network. Yes. So this program that I have for personal trainers called Strength to Sell, mm -hmm. that is as important as anything else is to learn how to sell. Don't be afraid of the sales process. It's like any other process. It's like strength training or running. If you want to be good at it, you have to put time in. Selling is the same way. So find somebody in sales or find a book yeah. that is like who you are. Don't try to force yourself to be something you're not. Okay. But you have to have a like-minded referral sources that you work with. We have a very large group of referral sources that we work with that we spoke of earlier. Yeah. Doctors, yeah. lawyers, um, the wealth. Acupuncturists, massage therapists, real estate agents, wealth managers, it doesn't matter. You want to have as many people who can talk about your service mm -hmm. and vice versa because that's the best. The best referral source is you're giving them your clients information and yeah, obviously yeah. coming back to you. Wow. That being said, um, in the last few questions here actually, uh, what what systems do you think, I mean, I think you've made it pretty obvious, but I think, you know, looking back at point for point, what systems have you set up in your business to, to help it grow? Because I think people sometimes, they do well, but uh, in order to help, help have leverage and help it grow, you know, you've mentioned CDs, um, what else have you, what else have you done? Well, with, with the marketing of the company through DVDs, mm -hmm. through the El Rome course, through the Strength to Lead and Strength to Live corporate programs, mm -hmm. we have a couple of keynote programs we do as well, as well as a program for councils on aging. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to come up with ideas, find niche markets that aren't so heavily populated. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, you don't, re, don't reinvent the wheel, make yes. your new yes. wheel. Yes. Yes. That's kind of the goal. Yes. And I think that's the thing that, uh, that entrepreneurial spirit does is that you see a problem, you try to fix the problem. So as one of my clients jokingly used to say, you would brand your mother if you thought it would make you money. And you know what? He's right. Oh, He's man. right. That, but that's the goal yeah. is you find if you can solve a problem, yes. that's the job of an entrepreneur. So hopefully I answered that one. No. And then lastly, I, I guess walking away. What's, the, you know, two young entrepreneurs, older, you know, people who just want to start their own thing. What's the, I mean, I, I'm not a big fan. I'm a fan of a lot of advice, but if you want to rank it, number one, uh, what, what number one thing, you know, do you see right now where you're at? Is it the, the one thing you would tell them walking away from this? Solve a problem. Solve a problem. Solve a problem. If you see a big problem, if there is a niche market out there, you can, and I've said it, Five times, I yeah. apologize. No, I, but if, 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 the, if you see a problem and you can mm -hmm. solve that problem, you will do very well. And the last thing I can say is, I know people always want to help. That's yep. what personal trainers, that's the big thing about them. They want to help. 
So. But you have to make money too. Steve, thank you so much. Um, to those listening, you can certainly go on satinwellness.com for more uh, information on um, Steve Satin Services and the entire company. Um, clearly, clearly, there are core values and his uh, entire message here and, and, and state of mind is at the top of the line. So um, definitely uh, tune in and check things out. I will have um, some of his content of this interview uh, on uh, rubinkanyafitness.com as well. So um, thank you, Steve, honestly, for coming with me today. Ruben, great seeing you again. Thanks Fantastic. for having me.